Hello, my name is Anton Arhipov and in this video I'm going to talk about new features in Kotlin 1.6. This is primarily a stabilization release. A lot of new features were introduced with the experimental status in Kotlin 1.5.30 where you either needed to switch the features on with the compiler flag or you needed to opt in for some experimental API. If you missed that, you are probably not subscribed to our channel yet. So you know what to do, hit that subscribe button. So in Kotlin 1.6, we are making a lot of experimental features available by default. The new release brings a number of language updates we get the sealed one statement, a few improvements related to the suspend functions, uh, improved type inference, and better support for annotations. There is also a number of updates in Kotlin native, but the most important feature in the list is the preview of the new memory manager, which is aimed at eliminating the differences between JVM and native platforms for Kotlin. There are plenty of new features in the standard library as well. For example, there are the new read line functions that don't require null checks anymore. In fact, the standard library updates are so interesting we decided to record a dedicated video about these. My colleague Sebastian Eigner made a really nice video about the updates, so make sure you check it out after this video. Let's talk about the language related features first. So finally, the sealed when statements have landed in Kotlin. Previously, if we used when as an expression returning a value, it was exhaustive by default when it was used with sealed classes, enums or boolean types. In case if not all the options are covered, then the result is a compilation error. But if the expression doesn't return a value, then it is just a statement and the compiler didn't check if all the options for the subjects are covered. Starting with Kotlin 1.6, the compiler will check for the exhaustiveness and warn you if you missed anything. You either have to list all the options for the subject or use the else branch. I know some developer teams actually make rules that they don't use the else branch if the subject of the one statement is a sealed class or an enum. This enforces handling all the options explicitly and if you add a new sealed class or an enum, uh, the compiler will immediately point you at the locations in the code where you have to make the adjustments and you won't miss a thing. So I think it's great. In Kotlin, it is possible to use functional type as a supertype. It is sometimes useful when you are required to use a function, but you need to customize it somehow. For instance, pass an extra parameter to it. The same wasn't possible if the functional type is marked with a suspend keyword. And this is unfortunate as there are situations when you would want to derive from such type. And this limitation is now removed. The next feature is also related to functional types that are marked with suspend keyword. Kotlin 1.6 introduces stable conversions from regular to suspending functional type. As a call argument, you can now pass any expression or a suitable regular functional type where the suspending type is expected. The compiler will perform implicit conversion automatically. In Kotlin or Java, you can define a recursive generic type which references itself in its type parameters. Now the Kotlin compiler can infer a type argument based only on the upper bounds of the corresponding type parameter if it's a recursive generic. This enables various patterns with recursive generic types that are often used in Java to make builder APIs. While in Kotlin we can get away from using the recursive generics for builders by using the scope functions like apply or also, uh, we still need sometimes to use Java libraries that expose the Fluent API with recursive generics and it wasn't just elegant enough when we used such libraries in Kotlin programs. For instance, when using web test client in Spring Framework or when using the test containers library for integration testing. 
Now the compiler is able to infer the types correctly and we can use the API of such libraries as designed by the library authors. Next in the list is builder inference. Builder inference is a special kind of type inference which allows to infer the type arguments uh, of a call based on the type information from other calls inside the Lambda argument. This can be useful when calling generic builder functions like build list or sequence. And inside such a Lambda argument, there was a limitation uh, on using the type information that the builder inference tries to infer. You could only specify it, but you couldn't get it. For example, we could not invoke the get function inside the Lambda argument of a build list without explicitly specifying the type arguments. Now it's possible to skip specifying the type parameter for the builder and the compiler is able to infer the type information for us. In our example here, it's now possible to call the get function inside the parameter block for the build list function. With the new release, Kotlin now supports annotations on class type parameters. This feature is actually a part of Kotlin and Java interoperability story. Annotations for type parameters are useful when passing the meta information about the generic type and it's often used in combination with annotation processors in Java. The annotations on all type parameters are emitted into JVM bytecode now, so the annotation processors are able to use them. In Java, annotations are represented as interfaces and therefore it is possible to implement those interfaces. Kotlin 1.5.30 introduced the experimental support for instantiating the annotation classes on the JVM platform. With 1.6, the feature becomes available by default for both Kotlin JVM and Kotlin JS. Various Java frameworks make use of the annotations and require an instance of annotation interface for operations. For instance, a framework may use annotations to create some in-memory configuration of the application. And interoperability with Java frameworks and libraries is our priority. Now you can call the constructors on annotation classes in arbitrary code to obtain the resulting instance. The feature covers the same use cases as implementing the annotation interface in Java. Ages ago, Java 8 introduced repeatable annotations which are applicable multiple times on a single code element. And this feature requires two declarations to be present in Java code. The repeatable annotation itself should be marked with at repeatable and then it also requires a containing annotation to hold its values. Kotlin also has repeatable annotations, but the difference is that we only need at repeatable from the Kotlin annotation package to declare the annotation as repeatable. However, before 1.6 the feature supported only source retention and it was incompatible with Java 1. Because of that, when using some Java frameworks like Helidon for instance, you would need to make some workarounds in order to implement the desired behavior. Kotlin 1.6 now removes these limitations and the repeatable annotation accepts now any retention and makes the annotation repeatable both in Kotlin and Java. And Java repeatable annotations are now also supported from the Kotlin side. The development of Kotlin native is also happening at full speed and we have some interesting updates here. With Kotlin 1.6, you can try the development preview of the new Kotlin native memory manager. It moves us closer to eliminating the differences between the JVM and native platforms to provide a consistent developer experience in Kotlin multi-platform projects. We recently published a blog post about the new memory manager and if this is close to your heart, please read it and follow the instructions on how to try. The new Kotlin native automatic memory manager lifts the restrictions on object sharing between the threads. The new approach allows you to remove all the freeze function calls from your code and everything will work as usual. To enable the new memory manager, you just need to add a compilation flag or add the properties into Gradle configuration. To make the new memory manager stable sooner, we need your feedback. So if you have anything to report, please let us know in the corresponding U-Track issue. 
besides the new experimental memory manager, there are some nice additions in Kotlin Native. The new release supports the latest version of Xcode, that is version 13. Feel free to update your Xcode and continue working on your Kotlin projects for Apple operating systems. Starting from 1.6, you don't need a Windows host for compiling Windows targets. They can be compiled on any host that supports Kotlin Native. We also have reworked the LLVM dependency that uh, Kotlin Native uses under the hood. Thanks to this, the dependency size on macOS decreased to 300 megabytes compared to 1.2 gigabytes before. The application binary interface is now unified with the other Kotlin targets. In the previous versions, the authors of compiler plugins had to provide separate artifacts for Kotlin native because of the differences in the interface. Uh, starting with 1.6, the Kotlin multi-platform Gradle plugin is able to use the embeddable compiler jar for Kotlin native. And that is the same embeddable compiler jar that we use for JVM and JS IR backends. And this is a step towards unification of compiler plugin development experience. So you can now use the same compiler plugin artifacts for native and other supported platforms. This is currently experimental and you need to switch this feature on to use it. To start using the generic compiler plugin artifacts for Kotlin native, you would need to add uh, a line of configuration in your gradle.properties file. And we also have unified the unhandled exception processing across the Kotlin native runtime for use by the custom execution environments such as Kotlin coroutines. So this is all for today, folks. We continue to make Kotlin better with every new release and uh, there are a number of new goodies in the works. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to follow the updates and make sure you upgrade to the new version. Thank you for watching and have a nice Kotlin.